welcome to the session and we'll be talking about operational technology overview and there's a number of different components uh, within that as well one of them is the purdue model and it's a way to describe how the networking uh, happens what objects and devices are placed within the network we'll discuss that as well as it versus ot security perspectives there's definitely a different challenge uh, as it relates to ot security and what are the customer challenges that we need to address in order to solve part of the problems? So let's start with what is an operational technology? There's a number of different customers that uh, we deal with. Smart factories, distribution centers, uh, pharma technologies, power generation, things like that. And each one of them has different operational technology equipment from robotics to um, valves and pumps. And if you look at uh, power generation, with cooling towers and turbines and containment buildings and control uh, rooms. So there's a number of different components within the operational technology. If we look at a definition of OT, it's the hardware and software dedicated to detecting or causing changes in physical processes through direct monitoring and or control of physical devices such as valves, pumps. And as you see in this diagram here, there's two different components that we're looking at. This is the operational technology network, but we also have the IT, the information technology network as well. And typically there is a boundary between the two. Um, but for the OT environment, this is where we're concerned about the valves, the fans, the pumps, or even in the IoT uh, world, the different sensors that are located there. So if we look at it from a networking perspective, the traditional IT networks have been built up over the years and you see uh, different switches, uh, core switches in their environment, um, firewalls, UTM devices, routers connecting out to the Internet and into the cloud. Um, and within the IT network, you know, there's um, I, IP phones, um, scanners, uh, printers that you see, um, cameras and surveillance and so forth. And if we look at the compute in the storage right at the data center level, uh, wireless controllers, or network attached to storage, and so forth. All of these are elements of the IT network. However, when we talk about the OT network, there's a term called the Purdue model. And the Purdue model gives a different layering of information. So if we look at the IT network, and that's going to be called the enterprise network, that'll be at level four and five of the Purdue model. So we take that entire network on the left and compress it into level four and five. Then if we look at the industrial DMZ, demilitarized zone, that'll be in levels three and 3.5. So if you hear these terms and you're talking to an OT uh, person or a plant engineer, where we have a DMZ at level 3.5, this is what they're referring to. And you can see the distinction between the IT network and the OT network. And for operational technology networks, they're broken down even further. So the supervisory layer is at level two, the process control is at level one, and the field control is at level zero. So these are just terms that you should be aware with. And there's other terms like industrial Internet of Things or industrial control systems like ICS or SCADA. And we'll dive into those in a little bit more detail. But one thing to be aware of is there's a convergence between IT and OT. And it's really a big organizational challenge. And this is really critical for operational success. Different groups need to work together in order to provide successful integration and visibility within the two different networks of IT and OT. And understanding the political boundaries are really key for successful. You can see that the security team doesn't align with the manufacturing team until well up into the organizational structure of the company. So this side shows you the manufacturing line, and here is the security team. So it's really important to make sure that we break down some of these political barriers that may exist within the company. So here are some of the components within the OT network or the industrial control system, the ICS components. You have a PLC or programmable logic controller, and these are basically devices that receive information from sensors or input devices, and they process the data and they trigger output based on pre-programmed parameters. There's a number of different vendors um, that provide PLCs, ABB, Allen Bradley, um, Siemens, Mitsubishi, Honeywell, and the list goes on. 
And very similar to a PLC is a remote terminal unit. And an RTU is used very similar to a PLC, but it's used in a wire geographical telemetry. So you can spread these things out a little bit uh, more from a geographical perspective. And then we see the HMI, and this is the human machine interface. And this gives you a, a graphical representation of the process controls that are going on. And you see in this diagram, you know, where some uh, tanks are being filled and you have uh, temperature and pressure sensors. And if everything is green, that's a good thing, um, but it gives you a graphical user interface. So it's easy to understand the processes and what all of the components need to be from a monitoring perspective. Next, we see the engineering workstation or the EWS. And the engineering workstation is used to design and configure and maintain the diagnostics of the ICS application. You may hear a term ladder logic, and that's what this is used for as well. The engineering control, uh, the engineering workstation um, controls the PLC by providing ladder logic to tell the tank when to open up the valve to add water for coolant, for example. So this is all happening with the engineering workstation. And then the historian provides you all of the data in context, in context of the historical values. These are used to provide um, context and how to improve part of the process control where you can get uh, more information of what systems were working properly uh, and so forth. And some of the vendors that have historians are Schneider Electric, uh, Wonderwear, OSI Soft, and Rockwell. There's a lot more, but these are just a couple of highlights uh, as well. So these are different components of the OT network. Now, if we go back to our network diagram, now let's place these control systems in the right layer uh, within the Purdue model. So you see at level zero, you have actuators and sensors and so forth at level zero. These are the field control components. At the process layer, this is where the programmable logic controller, the PLCs, where the RTUs reside. And then at the supervisory layer, you have your HMI and your engineering workstation and historian. So this provides you different visibility depending on which layer of the OT network you're in within the Purdue model. And another way to look at this, and this is from a MITRE attack perspective. And MITRE attack is a way to uh, evaluate security risk for different networks. I'm showing here the MITRE attack for the enterprise network, you know, between levels four and five. And then we also have a separate MITRE attack for ID, uh, industrial control systems. And here is the um, landing page that you see right here if you're interested in getting more detail on the MITRE attack framework. So this way you can understand how different components could be compromised if it's an HMI or engineering workstation uh, to get to a PLC or a sensor. If you're coming from a security perspective, keep in mind that the Purdue model is more of a connectivity model to show you where the different components fit within the um, Purdue model. So for example, the sensors are at level zero, the PLCs will be at level one, and the HMIs and engineering workstations will be at level two. This is in contrast to the MITRE attack framework, which is more of a security framework to show you how the systems might be compromised. From there, there's many different terms. Another term that you'll hear is a SCADA system, and that stands for supervisory control and data acquisition. And as the term implies, uh, the first component of this is the ability to control the network. And the next component is the ability to monitor and collect information from the SCADA system. So this way you have good visibility. Other terms you may hear are ICS or industrial control systems, distributed control systems where it's spread out a little bit more over a plant uh, factory, if you will, or even PCN for process control network. So these are all important terms. And then the next component is, how do they relate to like IT security and OT security? So if we look at IT security, the main uh, drivers are data confidentiality and privacy. And you're going to have a high level of concern or high level of connectivity in the network, as I showed you in the network diagram before. And typically in the IT network, we're dealing with standard protocols and devices like computers and laptops, mobile phones, things like that. And there's multiple layers of control and telemetry 
within the IT uh, network. From an OT perspective, they do care about confidentiality and privacy, but it's not their number one concern. Safety and availability is their number one concern because the OT network is responsible to produce the goods and manufacturing and services that their customers demand, like electric power, for example. So I need to make sure that I'm delivering that in a safe and available manner. So these are the top concerns from an OT security perspective. And then traditionally, it's air-gapped, where you can see there's no connection to the internet or cloud computing and things like that. And this is changing over time, but traditionally, you have to be sensitive to um, the air gap nature of an isolated on-premise network. And then there's specialized protocols. It's not like standard protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, and so forth. You have like uh, Modbus and Goose and DNP3 and um, Siemens S7. These are specialized and proprietary protocols that are used to connect legacy devices and operating system platforms to be able to perform their uh, OT responsibilities. And then lastly, from an OT security perspective, there's little or no visibility um, in the IoT or OT environment. So there's a lot of risk associated with that because the monitoring systems in place, you know, over the last few years. And we're in the infancy, but this is starting to change. Terms are really important. So just be aware that you may not even get agreement on what the right term is, depending on what department you're talking to. The next term that you will may hear is digitalization or industry 4.0 or Internet of Things. All of these components are um, items that are used to transform business to make them more efficient. And as you see right here, this is a trend towards automation and data exchange in the manufacturing technology and processes that occur in, you'll hear this word, um, cyber physical systems, CPS. Uh, Gartner likes to use that term, um, as well as Internet of Things and industrial Internet of Things right, with cloud computing. You can see the origin of where this happened from water power and steam power way back in the 1700s. And into the 1800s, you see mass production lines, assembly lines and electricity. And if we look at like the 1960s, 1970s with computers and automation and robotics, and now we're up into Industry 4.0, where we have cyber physical systems, OT, cloud computing, cognitive computing, um, you know, data lakes, machine learning, AI, and so forth. But with all of this connectivity and the rise of Industry 4.0, it's introduced a whole new range of security issues that IT now has to deal with from an OT perspective, where intellectual property uh, may have been integrated in with the OT environment. So with Industry 4.0, a lot of people are doing digital twins or simulations. Um, you have Internet of Things where you have sensors connected all over the world for predictive maintenance, smart metering, things like that. Cybersecurity is a big issue that we need to incorporate into this. And cloud computing gives you tremendous leverage with operational efficiencies. And then you get manufacturing with automation, with robotics and other components that are helping drive more efficiencies in the manufacturing process, as well as augmented reality and big data, where you can look at all of the data and do preventive maintenance and other components. And a lot of autonomous robots are starting to hit the scenes. So all of this internet and connectivity is really cyber risk. So if we look at it, the biggest risk for an OT environment is production downtime. This really causes financial losses at the bottom line. If we look at over the last few years, um, impacts from NotPetya, um, they're in the millions and millions of dollars. As you see here, almost $870 million for some companies that they had financial losses because their production lines were down. So there's another attack where it cost millions of dollars. And then the next element here is loss of sensitive, uh, sensitive intellectual property, right? Where you're gonna reduce your competitive posture. And, is a result of um, Verizon's data breach report, they're predicting that eight times uh, more likely are manufacturing firms likely to be breached because of theft and trade secrets than other vertical markets. So this is really driving a good focus on manufacturing security. And then lastly, safety and environmental issues. 
we have compliance violation, legal liability, and brand impact. Um, and so Triton was um, an attack on a, chemical, a petrochemical facility that happened re recently and where there could have been dramatic safety uh, and environmental incidents that were a result of that. So what challenges does Defender for IoT, formerly CyberX, address for clients? And the first one is to give visibility, right? What IoT and OT assets do we have on the network and how can we easily implement better segmentation and zero trust policies. The next element is risk and vulnerability management, where we can answer questions like, what are the risks to our crown jewels and how do we prioritize mitigations? The next challenge is threat monitoring, incident response and threat intelligence. How do we know if there's a, a, an OT threat within our network right now and how do we quickly respond to them? And then we have operational efficiencies so we can bridge the gap between OT and IT and how do we uh, quickly and easily identify, rapidly eliminate inefficiencies and misconfigured devices or compromised networks. And then lastly, how do we unify IT and OT governance and help the SOC get different tools so they'll have visibility into the OT world where the SOC is now being responsible for looking after the cyber threats. Um, so there's a number of different ways uh, to look at those challenges and we'll show you those in uh, upcoming videos. But lastly, if you're interested in more detail on what are the global risks to IoT and ICS, I'd highly encourage you to go to the global risk report. And here's a link where you can download that and look at all the different details. Thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you in another uh, session.